five minute history of the Commodore 64. A docu blip from C Productions. If you're a gamer over the age of 30, the name of Commodore probably rings golden bells in your head. For it was Commodore that brought the golden age of arcade home gaming to the world. But how did they do it? And why? Commodore International started out as a typewriter company, believe it or not. And then, they branched into making computer chips for other companies, such as Atari and Apple. Not long after, Jack Tremail, the evil genius behind Commodore, discovered that they should make their own computers with their own chips. Thus, the Commodore Pet was born. Ugly bitch, isn't it? Among the major innovations that the Pet brought to the computer gaming world was Petski, a wonderful character-based graphic that allowed people to make not only card games, where Commodore brought in their own symbols for making card games simple to create, but almost any kind of game, from Space Invaders to Text Adventures. Commodore was the first computer company to have a computer for under a thousand dollars in a very competitive and new market. In fact, they were the first company to have a computer for under three hundred dollars in an even more competitive market years later. Then came the VIC-20, improvements on the Petsky character set and its chips. Well, the VIC-20 was the beginning of a new generation of computer gaming technology. It was the little brother to the Commodore 64, the computer that made Commodore a world beater. In fact, at one point, Commodore was more popular than Apple and IBM combined. How did Jack Tremail manage this feat? Well, he was a ruthless bastard. And just like every Commodore iteration that came after him, the curse was true. Take on the name of Commodore, and you become a fucking prick. Got some debt in your company? Owe some company some money? Buy the company? Negate the debt? And you're flying free! Now, if Jack Tremail had been caught at these business actions, he probably would have been thrown in jail. He probably would have been thrown in a concentration camp, just like the one he escaped in Jewish Nazi Germany. Oh my god! I've said something racist! Commodore and its psychopathic, sociopathic director, Jack Tremail, ushered in the new age of the personal computer. This was the first time that you could buy a computer for under a thousand dollars in today's money and allow it to not only play games at home, but business software and productivity as well. It was a revolution, and Jack Tremail pissed it down the toilet. What did he do? What did he do with his fame and fortune? Well, he sold out and moved to Atari. That's right, Jack Tremail sold out, moved to Atari, and tried to release a competitive computer on that side of the fence. Unfortunately, he was deluded and the curse had faded. No matter what a ruthless prick he was, he could no longer make his powers work on other people. Everyone knew what an asshole he was, and no one wanted to work with him. He was famous in Silicon Valley for his cutthroat dealings, yelling at people, throwing things like typewriters, just like John Cleese. In fact, it's quite likely that Jack Tremail had bipolar disorder. Would he have produced such an amazing computer system and marketing? If he had been on medication, would antipsychotics and lithium have killed the Commodore movement? Who can say? I'm sure that it would have been funny seeing him in a straitjacket in a bouncy room though. So what happened to the mighty Commodore 64? Well, Commodore made the choice to buy out an arcade game development company that was working on a home arcade system called the Amiga. It was a flawed system, it was unfinished, and the Commodore engineers couldn't finish it themselves, so they released a flawed system. 
to a world that loved it. Unfortunately, for the world at large, and especially the coders and programmers and enthusiasts, the Commodore Amiga was much harder to program, and thus not quite the revolutionary device the Commodore 64 had been. In a surprisingly short time after that, during which Commodore released several iterations of the Amiga, Commodore finally flopped. The end. No more Commodore, and the wondrous Commodore 64, which had taken on the early consoles such as the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, and the Sega Mega Drive, and even the PC, was dead. Enthusiasts and coders made demos and hardware and software for the Commodore 64 for decades afterwards. And this also inspired some other ruthless people to take on the Commodore brand name and create their own versions of Commodore CRAP! Unfortunately, this has led to the Commodore name being branded as something that only idiots would associate themselves with. Now, C would not like to be taken to court, no matter how good the publicity would be from that event. We're sure that Barry at Commodore USA would love to sue our asses, and we welcome it. We'd put their court order over our workbenches in a gold frame. We've got nothing more to say on current technology of Commodore USA, as they will surely take their lawyers and sue our asses, as they've got nothing better to do, because they can't even make their own operating system for their own computer. And that is the history of Commodore. I thank you. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you. Here at C, we are keeping up with the Commodore. In fact, we're surpassing it with the SV6510. That's right, the Sid Vicious 6510, the ultimate in handheld gaming technology. With its slick, stylish case and two touchscreens, the SV6510 is surely a Nintendo DS killer. And with its amazing WebKit-based operating system, you can do anything you like with pure JavaScript and CSS3. Proposed specifications. This is what Jerry Ellsworth, the creator of the C64 DTV, said about our product. Proposed operating system specifications. Look, it's a robot! This is what the CEO of Commodore, known as Barry, had to say about our device. All together now. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Cause the Commodore don't know what to do.